you guys. It's uh, good to be back with you. Welcome back. I hope your winter break was enjoyable, and I hope you're having a good new year. Um, we got to get right back into algebra, though. You know how this goes. Uh, we got a lot to learn, and we are we are quickly approaching the end of the quarter. In fact, um, as of, of the day that you'll be watching this video, there are only uh, nine days, counting today, left in second quarter. Right, so we need to uh, we need to finish strong. We are still working in unit four. We are on now to lesson five. You probably don't recall this, but right before winter break, the very last thing you did in this class was take a quiz. So we're beyond a quiz now, and we are still moving on in unit four. And I'm going to teach you a new way to write a linear equation today. This is the third and final way, and it's called point-slope form. Notice it says day one on here. That's because uh, this is a two-day lesson. So real quick, let's review the other two forms of linear equations that we've covered so far. We have covered uh, slope-intercept form, right? Uh, I'll write that out. Oh, by the way, obviously I'm recording from home. <laughs> so you'll occasionally hear my dog barking because, believe it or not, the mailman is here. And there the mailman goes right, uh, right past my front window. And I, you, you probably might hear my neighbors shoveling snow and their snow blowers are, yep, it's real. Recording from home is no joke. Okay, back to algebra. Slope intercept form, if you remember, is this. Y equals MX plus or minus B. And this is really our favorite form. We like that one best. Then we also learned about standard form. Standard form is, is not all that useful unless you're calculating the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. And that one is this, ax plus by equals c. We did work with that before break. And we even uh, manipulated that so that we took our standard form and we converted it into slope-intercept form. Now, those are review. Today, this is the new one. Point, slope, form. And it looks like this. Y minus Y1 equals m parenthesis or m times x minus x1. And you're only going to be plugging numbers into three spots here. You'll be putting a number here, you'll be putting a number here, and you'll be putting a number here. Now, of course there's some little tricky spots in this really bizarre looking linear equation. The fact that this is a subtraction here and a subtraction here gets a little dicey when we end up with negative numbers here. So we'll have to go over a few examples where we remember that subtracting a negative number, we have to do some little special magic trick there. But essentially you are plugging in uh, a point, hence the x1 and y1, that's gonna come from an ordered pair, like that. And you're plugging in a number here in the m position, and don't forget that m is equal to the slope, which you will be given today. Okay, now, once I teach you how to plug these numbers in and how to make any cute little adjustments uh, if you are subtracting a negative, which sometimes we are and sometimes we aren't, then I'm going to teach you to convert this form into slope-intercept form. So today, even though we're learning about point-slope form, by the time we work through our examples and our problems, uh, we will be starting with this form and we'll be plugging numbers in but we won't be completely done until we have converted our equations into slope-intercept form. So although we're learning about this today, the ultimate goal is up here, okay? So point-slope form is the new concept of the day. And again, we're gonna spend two days on this. Okay, here we go. Um, Point slope formula, it's used to write the equation of a line when you are given a point, x1 and y1, 
and the slope of the line represented by m, right? So again, I'll write the formula here. It's y minus y1 equals m, which is your slope, times in parentheses x minus x1. And again, if you look up here, they're telling you you will be given an ordered pair. You will be given the coordinates x1 and y1. They will give you an ordered pair and they will give you slope. Your job will be to put these numbers in the correct spots and then manipulate the equation so that we end up in uh, slope intercept form. So here the directions are gonna, they're kind of telling you that. Be sure to distribute and then solve for y. So real quick, when they say be sure to distribute, what they mean is distribute the m, right? This is really the distributive property kind of in disguise right now. It'll look more like the distributive property when we put some numbers here. So you'll be distributing the m and then you'll be manipulating the equation to solve for y so that it ends up in this form. You'll see. It sounds really terrible. Honestly, it's not. It's not that bad. Okay, here we go. Let's get started. First example, they give you the ordered pair of 4, 1. That's the point. So that's, I'm going to label it, and I think you should too. That's your x1 and y1. Hey, thankfully, they're both positive numbers. That's a good thing. And they tell you the slope is 2, so that's your m. All right, so I've got my x1, my y1, and my m. Again, we're going to be plugging numbers into this spot, this spot, and this spot, and then working with that equation. So here we go. <clears throat> y minus y1. So y1 is 1. Equals m, which is my slope, which is 2, parenthesis, x minus the x1 number, which is 4. That's from my ordered pair. Okay. There you have it. This is officially in point slope form, right? So you have the ordered pair kind of broken apart there, and then you've got the slope. So that's why they call it point slope form. But we're not done. If only it were that simple. I wish I could just let you leave it <laughs> like that, but no, 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 no. Now we're on to these directions where you have to distribute the m, in this case that's a 2, and then solve for y. So. Now we're going to distribute that 2 here and here. So here's what we have. We have y minus 1 equals 2x minus 8. Okay, so I did the distributive property. And now we solve for y, meaning this guy right here, this y is who I want to have alone. So right now, y is not alone. He has a minus 1. So how do you move that minus 1 over? Well, you add 1, right? We know how to do this. Those cancel. And now we have y equals 2x minus 7. y equals mx minus b. In this case, it's a minus b. So to see that, look at that. Let's, let's go back. We took our point. We took our slope. We substituted those values into the point-slope formula. We did the distributive property. And then we isolated or solved for y. And now what we have is slope-intercept form. And that's the goal. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, you know, in a nerdy algebra kind of way. Let's do another one. Let's do number three. I'm going to start by labeling. This is the x1, this is the y1, and slope is 2 thirds. All right, here we go. y minus y1, which is 0, equals slope, which is 2 thirds, parenthesis, x minus x1, which is negative 6. Uh oh. What do you guys remember about subtracting a negative? I hope you remember that taking away negative is the same as adding positive. 
So if you end up with subtracting of a negative, you can really just think of that as a positive or an addition or plus, okay? And that might happen sometimes over here on the left with the y minus. We'll get to some of those here in just a minute. But for now, let's do the steps. Next up is to distribute the two thirds. Y minus zero, do I really need to show the minus zero? No, it can just stay Y. Two thirds times X is two thirds X. Two thirds times a positive six or two thirds of six is four. So that one's done. Y equals MX plus B, cool. Now you can very easily see your slope. You can very easily see your y-intercept. You could very easily graph this. You could have easily graphed this line given that point and that slope as well. Really, you could have graphed from here easily, or you could have graphed from here easily. Basically, just your starting points would be different, but notice your slope is the same, your driving directions. So that one wasn't too bad, except they introduced us to the concept of subtracting a negative. Let's do number four. I like number four because notice it has two negatives in the ordered pair. That's good. That's good practice. We have an x1, a y1, and our slope is also negative three-fourths. So y minus y1, which is negative one, equals our slope, which is negative three-fourths, parenthesis, x minus x1, which is negative eight. So here we go again. Look, you guys, taking away a negative is really adding a positive. So I'm going to go through and fix those right now because it happens again here. Taking away negative 8 is the same as just adding positive 8. So minus a negative becomes addition. Now, we need to distribute that negative 3 fourths. Negative 3 fourths times x is negative 3 fourths x. Negative 3 fourths times 8 or negative 3 fourths of 8 is negative 6. Okay, now solve for y. Uh, so I need to subtract 1. Those would cancel. And y equals negative 3 fourths x minus seven. Cool. Y equals mx plus b, or in this case, y equals mx minus b. That's your y-intercept, that's your slope. Point slope form. Let's do one more. Yeah, ta -ta 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 -ta. Is there one that I like better than the other? No, let's do number six. I kind of like number six. I'm going to start by labeling my x1 my y1 and my slope, my m. y minus negative 9 equals m x minus 0. So I'm going to fix things up here. Subtracting a negative is really adding. Uh, x minus 0 is just x. Okay, so I have to distribute. In this case, it's just multiply. Now solve for y. He doesn't want to have the add 9. So you subtract 9. I did this all in blue. Oh, well, I don't suppose you really care, but that's okay. y equals 4x minus 9. That's your final answer. It's in slope intercept form. That's your y intercept right there. That's your slope, which is the same as 4 over 1. Remember, I kind of like slope to be written as a fraction, just because if you ever have to drive your slope, you need both of those numbers. Anyways, that's, the, uh, that's it for the video today. That's it in a nutshell. Point slope form, plugging in those three numbers, then manipulating the equation to get to slope intercept form. I hope this wasn't too tricky. Um, again, you can always set up a Google Meet with me and we can work together. That's not a problem. We're going to spend more time on this tomorrow. So until then, 
Be well, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.